It's beginning to feel a lot more like a World Cup year. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to a World Cup prediction video, a very early one, which I guess, what can go wrong? So for this video, I'll be giving you the full prediction, even the bracket, the knockout rounds. I'll pick a champion at the end. For the group stage, I will be giving you the scoreline of every single game as goal differential can play a role on who advances or not to the next round. For the knockout rounds, I'm just going to pick who advances as if you advance on a 4-0 win, 1-0 win on PKs, it doesn't really matter for the knockout stage. With that said, don't forget to comment down below your predictions. We will be coming back to this video later on and we'll be doing a reaction to it to see who got it right and who got it wrong. So good luck. You're definitely going to need it. I don't need it. I definitely need a lot of luck on this one. We don't have the rosters. We don't have anything. So this is a very, it's not even a prediction. It's just a random guess. If you are American, you definitely know us by now. If you're not, we will be doing a full coverage of the World Cup here at the channel. Obviously, throughout the year, will be more U.S. soccer heavy content. But hey, stick around. You might enjoy it. Okay. And also understand, I will be using the S word a lot. I will be calling it soccer. It's just a word. Let's all be mature about it, okay? So don't forget to smash that like button and comment your predictions down below. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Let's play the intro and let's start the predictions. Okay, so let's start with my score lines of group a, and then we're going to go to the final results of the group, and I'll explain all these picks. So for Group A, I have Senegal and Netherlands tying 1-1. I have Qatar defeating Ecuador 2-0. Qatar and Senegal tying 1-1. Netherlands and Ecuador tying 1-1. Netherlands defeating Qatar 2-1 in the last game. And Ecuador losing to Senegal 3-1 in their last match. So with those results, we end up having the group with Senegal in first with five points and Netherlands in second with also five points, but Senegal would advance in first due to the goal differential. Qatar, the host nation, would be knocked out and so would Ecuador in last place with one point. Look, before doing the actual results, I actually thought I would have Qatar advancing, but after doing the actual simulation that I just talked about, yeah, Qatar would get knocked out. Netherlands comes in with a strong, rock-solid defense with Virgil van Dijk and Delight on the back. Also, the offense can score. I have some doubts in terms of Louis van Gaal in charge, but talent-wise, they are very strong. Also, thoughts and prayers to Louis van Gaal as he's currently dealing with prostate cancer. I'm wishing him a speedy recovery. Hopefully, everything turns out just fine. Now, as for Qatar, we know and we've seen their strategy in Gold Cup. They soak up pressure and try to beat the opponent in transition. Afiv and Ali can be very dangerous, but I don't think they have enough to go through unless the ref helps a bit. Now, Senegal, they are stacked. The current AFCON champion and they also knocked out Egypt to get here in Mo Salah, led by Sadio Mane with a solid center-back duo of Koulibaly and Diallo, along with Mendy on goal. This team is packed with talent, along with a great Senegalese coach. Now, Ecuador is an enigma team to me. They can be very hot, they can be very cold. They're also very young, and I see them more as a 2026 team rather than a team for now. It will be great for them to get this experience. So yeah, I do have Senegal going in first and Netherlands advancing in second. As long as the ref doesn't help the host nation, which I'm not going to count on it being rigged. Now let's go to Group B. And for Group B, the fourth team of this group can be Ukraine, Scotland, or Wales. I'm going to assume it's Wales for this simulation, but again, it could be the other two as well, and it could change the way I predict it depending on who goes through. But let's assume it's Wales and Bale that make it. For this group, I have England defeating Iran 2-0 in the first game, United States defeating Wales 2-1 in the first match. Now, then I have Iran defeating Wales 1-0 in their second match, and England in the United States tying 1-1. Yeah, I know English people are not going to agree with this, but, you know, I think it's very much possible depending on what Greg Berhalter does. But with that said, I have England defeating Wales 3-1 in the last match, and I also have the United States tying Iran 1-1. With that said, this is how the group is going to look like. England advances in first with seven points. The United States advances in second with five points. Iran gets knocked out in third place with four points, and Wales finishes with zero. Now look, England is stacked with talent, but they do have issues. And I'll talk about one of them. I do think they lack a creative midfielder. And people will point out to Mason Mount, Jack Grealish, James Ward-Prowse, if he's called up, James Madison. But 
I don't see them as players that can pick a lock. The wings though, oh boy, England is stacked there. They do have talent. Now I do have some questions in terms of their defense. The center backs are shaky besides Tomori, in my opinion, but he's not always called. Harry Maguire can be a problem. The goalkeeper situation is shaky in my opinion as well. And I mean, they do have one issue and their main issue is Southgate, which is the same issue the United States has. The United States comes in with the young talent and it's the most talented generation we've ever had. We do have a coaching problem with Greg Berhalter and his bounce passes, but led by talents like Christian Pulisic, Giovanni Reyna, Weston McKinney and more, I think the United States does have enough to pull through and go through this group. Now, look, I do think England and the United States would struggle with Iran and with Wales. These are two teams that will likely face them on a low block and both teams will struggle to score. Iran caused a lot of trouble to Spain and Portugal in the last World Cup. We saw that. Lunless to say, I do believe both England and the United States have what it takes to go through this group. This time with England finishing first, unlike 2010 when the United States stopped the group with England. Understand, I think England is overhyped, but I also think they're a fantastic team. Overhyped does not mean bad. Also, look at this exclusive picture of Harry Kane when he found out he won't be facing Panama in the World Cup or San Marino. Now let's go to Group C. For Group C, we have Argentina defeating Saudi Arabia 4-0 in their first game, Mexico and Poland tying 2-2, Poland defeating Saudi Arabia 2-0, Argentina defeating Mexico 1-0, then Argentina defeating Poland 3-1, and Saudi Arabia losing to Mexico 3-0 in their last game. As for that, the group will finish like this. Argentina with 9 points in first place. Mexico and Poland tied with 4 points, but Mexico would get second place in goal differential. Saudi Arabia would finish in last with no points. I have said this before and I'll say it again. This Argentinian side is the strongest team I've ever seen from Argentina in my life. And this is also the strongest Argentina team likely since the Maradona era to win an actual World Cup. I think they're legit contenders. The defense is rock solid. Martinez on goal is a game changer for them. The midfield, you have options like Los Celso, DePaul. You have strong fullbacks like Montiel and Acuna that both play for Sevilla, Tagliafico that plays for Ajax. And up top, you have a lot of talent with Lionel Messi leading the way, along with Di Maria, Lataro Martinez, Julian Alvarez, Paulo Dybala, all well put together by coach Scaloni along with this team having plenty of experience. Now, as for Mexico, I do think they will have it figured out by then with Tata Martino in charge. I believe they'll be much better than we saw in World Cup qualifying. Now, Poland is a great team with a world-class center forward with Lewandowski, but they had to change coaches a bit before World Cup qualifying ended. Actually, yeah, it was a month before because Paulo Sosa abandoned the national team to take over a job at Flamengo. So I'm a bit uncertain towards what to expect from Poland. Mexico overall is a great team, but Lozano, Tecatito, and Raul Jimenez need to be informed for this to work the way I've said it, my prediction. I think they'll figure it out and they'll find a way to get to second place, but it can go either way between Mexico and Poland. Now, Saudi Arabia, yes, I'll have them finish last. And I know they finished ahead of Japan in World Cup qualifying, and they will probably have the crowd in their favor due to the proximity with Qatar. However, I just have them finishing last in this team. I don't. I think they were put in a very tough situation, and they won't go through. But hey, hopefully Saudi Arabia surprises us. I just don't think they have it in them to go through in this specific group. Now we're going to do Group D, another group that doesn't have all four nations ready. The fourth nation could be Australia, the UAE, or Peru. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume it's Peru. So for this group, I had Denmark defeating Tunisia 2-0, France defeating Peru 3-0, Tunisia and Peru tying 1-1, France and Denmark finishing with a 2-1 win for Denmark, then Tunisia losing 4-0 to France, and Peru and Denmark finishing with a 1-1 draw. With that said, this is how the group would finish. Denmark in first with 7 points, France in second with 6 points, Peru in third with 2 points, and Tunisia in last with 1 point. So yes, I think Denmark would top the group with France in second. So France, along with Brazil, to me are the two nations with the most talent and depth in this World Cup edition. The champs curse, you know, the champions curse has hit teams in the past because they won the World Cup when their most of their players were at their prime. Not the case for France. Many of their players were young in the last edition and they will be back and they'll be the same, if not even better. But many have figured out their transition game by now, so I want to see how they're going to adjust towards that. However, we saw a very good Denmark side in the World Cup qualifying and the Euros. So I have Denmark topping this group with France in second. Tunisia will finish last, and I do believe Peru can pull a draw with either France 
or Denmark. In this simulation I had with Denmark, but I think they can pull results with one of them. Peru does not have that much talent, especially now without Guerrero and Farfan, but they probably have the best South American coach in South American qualifiers, Gareca, and he will pull some tricks. So Denmark first, France second. Okay, now Group E. And Group E also doesn't have all four nations established. So it's going to be either Costa Rica or New Zealand. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume Costa Rica is the one qualifying. For this group, I have Germany defeating Japan 3-0, Spain defeating Costa Rica 1-0, then Japan and Costa Rica tying 0-0. Then I have Spain losing to Germany 2-1. Then I got Japan losing to Spain 2-1, so a 2-1 Spanish win. And then I have Germany defeating Costa Rica 2-0. With these results, we get Germany in first place in the group with 9 points, Spain in second place in the group with 6 points, then Costa Rica in third with 1 point in goal differential ahead of Japan that also will have 1 point. So as you can see, for this group, I'm expecting Germany and Spain to be dominant. Now, don't get me wrong. Japan is a good team, but they're not as talented as Japan once was or the past was, right? The past generations. Costa Rica, they're also not the same version as 2014. And if Kaylor Navas is out, this team is in big trouble. Now, Germany and Spain do have one similar problem, in my opinion, which is the center forward position, right? Probably Germany's best option is just to play Kai Havertz there. Now, Spain with Morata, I don't know. They need to figure that out. Regardless, both are contenders. I put Germany a little bit ahead of Spain because I think Hansi Flick will have that situation figured out in a system where other players can score and you're not relying on the center forward. We'll see how Spain does it. For that reason, I have Germany in first and Spain in second in this group. Whoever figures out that center forward position is going to be one dangerous team in this World Cup. Now let's go to Group F. For Group F, I have Croatia defeating Morocco in the first game, Belgium defeating Canada 2-1 in the first game as well. Now, Belgium will also defeat Morocco 3-1, and Croatia and Canada will tie 1-1. At the last game, Belgium will defeat Croatia 2-1, and Canada will also pull a draw with Morocco 1-1. With these results, this is how the group would turn out. Belgium in first with 9 points, Croatia in second with 4 points, Canada in third with 2 points, and Morocco in last place with 1 point. So despite Belgium's golden generation being past their prime, I do think they have what it takes to top this group. They still have Kevin De Bruyne and Lukaku. Tillemans is fantastic, along with young talent like Doku and many other players. I do think they're not really a title contender in the past, as Eden Hazard eating too many burgers might be one of the issues. But they're still a top team, and they can top this group. Now, Croatia is not the same as 2018. No Mandzukic, an age in Modric. However, they're still very strong, as we saw in World Cup qualifying. Perisic and Kovacic will definitely have to be at their A game if they want to make a deep run in this tournament once again. With that said, they do have enough to pull through Canada and Morocco. Now, Morocco might not be at their best because they might not have Ziyech as he does has, have issues with their current coach. But the team is still very good and they will count with a familiar face that many of you might know named Hakimi from PSG. As for Canada, they had an impressive run in CONCACAF and now it's time for the big boys, the big challenge. They will have to defend and try to beat their opponents in transition, which is when they are at their best. It's their first World Cup since 1986. I think they will struggle, but I'll say one thing, the same thing I said about Ecuador. This Canadian team led by Alfonso Davies and Jonathan David, it's a 2026 team, not a 2022. You will see, especially if they keep their fantastic manager, John Herdman, for the 2026 cycle. Then they will be an impressive team by then. Now let's go to Group G. For Group G, I have Switzerland and Cameroon tying 0-0, then Brazil and Serbia tying 1-1, then Cameroon losing to Serbia 3-1, then Brazil defeating Switzerland 2-0. At the last round, I have Brazil defeating Cameroon 4-0, and Serbia and Switzerland having a 2-2 draw. So with these results, Brazil finishes the group in first place with seven points. Then Serbia finishes in second with five points, Switzerland in third with two points, and Cameroon finishes in last with just one point. This is actually quite an interesting group. This group to me has a big gap between the top three teams and the fourth seed Cameroon. To me, Cameroon might be the weakest African nation to qualify and they will struggle in this group. I'm not saying there'll be a pushover. I just think their odds of going through are very low to almost none. Switzerland's always tough to face. And again, this is a team that topped Italy in the group of World Cup qualifying. And in the last World Cup, they tied Brazil 1-1 in the group stage, which is kind of funny because Switzerland and Serbia were also in the same group as Brazil in 2018. Now, Brazil and Serbia are the teams I have advancing. Serbia has size and talent. They are one of my dark horses candidates for this World Cup. I think Savic is a fantastic midfielder, but Vlavic, 
the man to watch out for. He could even be fighting for the golden boot. Definitely someone to keep an eye on for Serbia, but they have many more players and this is a fantastic team. Now, as for Brazil, this is the strongest Brazilian team since the early 2000s. This is a legit title contender. Neymar is not alone this time. This is a very experienced team. Most of the players were in the last World Cup. Thiago Silva and Marquinhos are one heck of a back line. And then you add the fact that Ederson or Allison will be behind them as the goalkeeper. Up top, you have talents like Neymar, Vinicius Jr., Anthony, Rafinha, Gabriel Jesus, Richarlison, and many more. Casemiro will play a key role because one of my main concerns are the fullbacks and he'll be responsible for protecting the back line and covering the fullbacks, which is an issue for Brazil. The nine can also be a problem. So with that said, I would personally play Fabinho from Liverpool as a right back for Brazil. That would solve the right back issue and maybe Neymar as a false nine and have Vinicius Jr. take over the left wing position. So if you do want me to do a deep dive into Brazil because I am Brazilian American, I can talk about them a little bit more. I can do a separate video of that. Just comment down below and maybe we'll do it. With that said, I have Brazil finishing first and Serbia finishing second. Now off to the last group, Group H. For Group H, I have Uruguay defeating South Korea 2-0, then Portugal tying Ghana 1-1, then I got South Korea defeating Ghana 1-0, Portugal and Uruguay tying 0-0, and for the last game, I have Portugal defeating South Korea 2-1 and Uruguay tying Ghana 2-2. With those results, we have Uruguay advancing in first due to goal differential, then Portugal advancing in second due to goal differential, obviously, and then South Korea in third with three points, and Ghana in last place with two points. So, personally, this is the group that I think is the most balanced of them all. You have a very strong South Korean side that will be heavily reliant on Son, or Sony, if you want to call him that way. Portugal arrives with little hype after a poor World Cup qualifying campaign, but don't let that fool you. This team is stacked with talents like Bernardo Silva, Rafael Leão, João Félix, Bruno Fernandes, Ruben Dias, and, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo for one last dance. Now, Uruguay struggled throughout qualifiers, but after replacing Oscar Tabares mid-campaign and signing Diego Alonso as the new manager, they found their identity. They are really good and they don't play possession style. They are deadly in transition and they have the perfect mix of experience and young talent, such as Suarez, Cavani and Godin, along with Valverde, Jimenez, Araujo, Arascaeta, a great team. And I can't wait to see them face Ghana, especially because Luis Suarez will likely be playing. And if you don't remember that 2010 handball from Luis Suarez that kind of got Ghana out of the World Cup, they're going to be seeking for revenge. But regardless, I have Portugal and Uruguay advancing. Uruguay in first, Portugal in second. So now let's look at the knockout round brackets. And I'm going to tell you who will win each game and who will win the World Cup. So for the round of 16, I have the United States facing Senegal in the round of 16. And the United States will advance defeating Senegal. I think the United States will pull an upset right there, even though Senegal would be the favorites. Now, Argentina and France would face each other early in the competition due to France advancing in second place. And I already have Argentina eliminating France. The other game in that same side of the bracket is Germany versus Croatia. And with that said, I have Germany eliminating Croatia and advancing to the quarterfinals to face Brazil, which will be knocking out Portugal. Now, heading to the right side of the bracket, we have England facing Netherlands. And I think England has what it takes to knock out Netherlands. So England will advance to the quarterfinals. The other quarterfinals will be Denmark and Mexico. And I do have Mexico winning and exterminating the Maldicion del Quinto Partido. Also, I can't wait for the meltdown on the comment section when they see that I picked Mexico and England to advance the quarterfinals. I can't wait to see the meltdown right there. The last ones would be Spain defeating Belgium. The golden generation of Belgium will finally come to an end and Spain will advance to the quarterfinals. And then I have Serbia knocking out Uruguay and advancing to the quarterfinals to face Spain. Okay, now let's go to the quarterfinals. So on the quarterfinals, I have Argentina knocking out the United States. Sorry, but the American dream would end there. But that would be a very successful World Cup for the United States. A very young United States getting ready for 2026. Now, I do have Brazil eliminating Germany. It'll definitely be 7-1, something like that. Okay, jokes aside, I think it'll be a very tough game. But Brazil should be able to out-talent and out, maybe even out-coach. Chichi could match up with Hansi Flick pretty well. And I think Brazil will advance against Germany and face Argentina in the semifinals. Now, in the other side of the bracket, I have England eliminating L3, Mexico, which, to be fair, that'll likely happen. And then I have Spain eliminating Serbia. However, 
If Serbia does defeat Spain, they could face England and they could have a story similar to Croatia in the past World Cup. But nonetheless to say, I think Spain will advance. They have the talent, good coaching. I think they'll make it to the semifinals and face England. Now, for the semifinals, I have Brazil knocking out Argentina on what will be a battle between these two nations. That would be such a crazy game to watch. Everyone would love to see that. Neymar versus Messi, Brazil versus Argentina. And then I have England advancing against Spain. Believe it or not, even though I say they're overhyped, because of the way this bracket was set up, I think England does have enough talent to make it to the final against Brazil. So again, England getting an easier bracket, right? When you see the picture of the bracket that we put on screen, the left side, right, with Brazil, Germany, Argentina, that is a tougher bracket than the other side, the right side of the bracket. So the third place, I'll just give it to Argentina. I think it's a great way for Messi to end his cycle in the World Cups, getting third place. It'll be honorable. So I'm just going to give this to Messi because I'm a big Messi fan, even though I'm Brazilian American. Now, the final... There's absolutely no way Brazil loses to England. Brazil has a better coach. Brazil has more depth. Brazil has a better defense, a better midfield, and better forwards. Brazil is literally better than England in pretty much everything. And one thing I'll tell you as well, England is known for bottling games. And Brazil is not, okay? Even though Brazil struggled in the past, when they have a talented generation like this one, they usually win it. So I have Brazil winning this World Cup. No bias right there. Now, if this game was in England, maybe England would defeat Brazil. Or if it was in Brazil, because Brazil does choke in World Cups when it's at home. With that said, in my prediction, I have Brazil winning the World Cup. Comment your predictions down below if you haven't already. And don't forget to smash the like button if you made it this far in the video. Or the dislike button. This is a democracy. And you have the freedom to do whatever you like. All right, everyone. That does it for this video. If you want us to make an in-depth video of every single group of the World Cup, let us know. We'll gladly do so during the summer. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this prediction. Hopefully I get most of it right. Hopefully I wasn't too crazy with it or too optimistic in regards to the United States and Brazil. Maybe I was a little bit biased. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go and have a great day. Yes. <laughs>